I've been asked several times how much light do these wood lights cast? Well, tonight we're going to do a video and find out. We're going to test this 1929 Cord L29. It is equipped with wood lights. It's a very dark night. There's no moon. So we'll give it a try. So I'm inside the car now and you can see how dark it is. Now the headlights are on, parked in front of the garage door. That's without the engine running. So I'm sure the voltage is a little low. They look pretty bright actually. Now revving up the engine a little, it makes a slight difference but not too much. dash lights. They have a separate switch. There's more of them over. More gauges over on the passenger side. It takes two hands for me to back out of here so I'm going to pause this while I get into a place where we can test the lights driving. and make this corner one-handed. No power steering. I gotta pause to shift. Okay, back to it. Not too bad. car I think that these lights are more than adequate if you're normally not going to be driving down the road at 60 miles an hour at night in a car this old um, I'm actually surprised I thought there'd be a lot less light I haven't done anything to attempt to aim them uh, I know they've been on this car for over 20 years without having been cleaned or polished inside or anything like that. So um, I think they did really well. I think one of the really cool things about wood lights is what they look like. And what they look like at night. I can see this, this looks foggy. I'll try and bring it into focus. Focus it right on those beams. It's just they have that um, flat topped elongated oval shape. There we go. Um, that just are, it's very unique. So the premise behind these wood lights is that they're aircraft styled, they're streamlined, and the um, the light is supposed to be all reflected into a concentrated beam 
that's flat on the top, not wasting light by shining it upward where you don't need it, uh, and focusing it just within uh, where you're going to be needing it on the road and no higher. So I guess that's the end of the test. I'm satisfied. Oh, I'll bring up one other thing. Uh, that one other thing is that, let's see, i got to find the amp gauge here, down there, okay, so with the engine off or idling, it's really discharging, and even with the engine revving, the generator is not putting out enough current to power all of the lights and the ignition. Now that's adjustable on the generator and if I was driving this car at night a lot I would have to adjust that brush on the generator to bring the current output up and get this thing so it was charging slightly with all of the lights on. But that is not the norm to be driving this car at night and um, if you have it adjusted too high when you're driving it in the daytime all the time you can cook the battery. So if I had that generator turned up they might have been slightly brighter. So this is what the car looks like with a little bit of light cast on it. 1929 Cord L29 Cabriolet. The 1929 Cord was the first front wheel drive production car. The differential is behind that housing. Uh, you can see the uh, front drive mechanism there, the inboard front brake drums. It's got four wheel hydraulic brakes, three speed manual transmission, 300 cubic inch straight eight engine. And uh, that's about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I think I learned something tonight, and uh, hopefully you found it worthwhile as well.